There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. One that for the past 30 years has traveled the world teaching others. A pioneer in America of the fighting science of savat. One who codified the sports of this fighting style. One who has produced clubs, champions, and continues to develop. Listen to words of Professor Buitron. Hello, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, we're starting off a great week. We had a great question. That question was, tell us about the knives involved within Dance Rue Savant. I said, sure will, you know, because number one, I'm, I'm holding one that has made uh, knife fighting in South Texas and Northern Mexico legends. It's called the Zacatripa. Okay, and I'm going to go into, into that blade in a little bit more, but this is a, one of the knives that we use within Dance Rue Savant. The problem is, I'm going to go into history. When I learned Cipote from my uncles, the one that, my uncle that taught me how to fight with a blade was my uncle Hector Chapa. And I was influenced by Itziro Chapa, the one that taught me the majority of Cipote, and of course my father as well. And there was no name for a fighting system, there were just names for two different patterns. There was a pattern called the Frelon, which literally means hornet, and then there's a pattern known as the labellula, which is a dragonfly. And these are patterns of strikes, of blocks, of counters, and how you go inside. And, you know, that's what you had. Around 1994, we were doing a seminar workshop at my school in Irving, and we had invited different people from different martial arts to come out. Uh, my Sifu Kisi was teaching counters, Kempo against the knife. Uh, Sensei John Ayers was teaching uh, Tanto, the Japanese uh, knife. There was a gentleman that was teaching Paquita Tercia. There was another gentleman that was uh, Jason Webster who was teaching Cabri Cabron. And I came out and we were all talking about what are you going to teach with, with a knife? And I said, well, I want to teach with how I was taught. And they came out and they said, what's it called? And I, I said, it's called Sacatripas, with an S. Okay, I want you to understand the difference. Because the knife, it's called a Sacatripa, without an S. This is the blade. Okay, and we'll, go and we'll touch base into a little bit of history. And Zacatripas was a set of techniques that we built, that we designed through the curriculum for a red glove of Savat, and for you to understand that. Okay? So as time progressed, everybody said, teach us Zacatripas and Zacatripas and Zacatripas, and all of a sudden, with the internet and everything comes in, both terms are used to describe a knife. Well, this knife has been around for a very long time. This, this one was one that my uncle gave me. And he said that his uncle had given it to him. Okay? So it's probably about 100 years old. Easy. Okay? Now, in today's, then I'm going to talk about how the Zacatripas changed, how it's modified, and so on and so forth. It was a gravity blade. Okay, how it opens. Okay, now when you opened it up, the leather, leather strap would go between the, the index and forefinger, and that's how you grabbed it. So it was a blade that was held blade up. In today's world, you start seeing a lot of guys want to hold it with the blade forward, and they say that's the way they were taught and this is the way it should be held, you know what, more power to them. You know, blade, blade up was the way I was taught, and it was, and it was only used um, with the Frelon type of defenses and the Frelon type of attacks, okay? Which later on, we can talk about what the Frelon 
pattern of striking was. So I'm going to show you two different patterns. You see? They all come different in different sizes, blades, or different twine. Because each horn is different. This is a goat horn. This is literally a goat goatsman knife. It was used to gut. That's why you held it this way. You place it underneath. This would not touch the entrails or the stomach. And you can just easily cut uh, the skin to open it up for you to start removing the innards from from a from a goat from a cabrito okay this was done in such a way that when you put it across the neck all you had to do is pull up and you would cut and bleed out jug out a, a goat a kid goat okay because we have a lot of cabrito so a lot of people say what what's cabrito cabrito is a kid goat so this blade was a herder's goat <clears throat> And each horn produced a different angle of blade, but they all worked on the same thing, grip on the bottom, fight in whichever format you wanted to go with. You see, my, you see me having it in the center line, because that's why I was gonna hold it. I'm not slashing back and forth. Everything's done from a little circle in there for me to be able to enter into nice, tight little spaces. Now. Why do we call it sacatripas? Because that's basically what a sacatripas was. It's to disembowel somebody. Okay? I'm going to talk about an incident that I saw. I was 15 years old, and we went to the fair in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. And I saw three gentlemen, you know, after some liquid courage and a couple of tequilas or what else, not who else, what else they were drinking. They started fighting. This one guy pulls out a dagger, and lo and behold, as soon as he struck the, the other gentleman, who I remember was wearing a striped shirt, white and red, the gentleman puts out, goes underneath, and disembowels that one attacker. And the person falls down, you know, grabbing his stomach. The other guy came in, and he grabbed him from the back of the head, pulling him down, and striking him in the stomach again. I remember the person looking at the crowd and I could see that S shape. I remember that very clearly. It stuck in my mind, that blade. Okay? So the next day, it's a Saturday. On Sunday, I went to go train with my uncle. We're eating with my grandmother. And I ask him and I say, you know, yesterday I saw an eye fight and the blade was cur curved and mother uncles was there and they go, you know, that's a sack of tripas. And one of them said, Tienes que ser, des, ser bien decidido si vas a usar una sack of tripas. Meaning you have to have already decided that it's life or death for you to pull out one. And that always stuck in my mind. And that is true. Because a fight can spark up anywhere. A knife fight can spark up anywhere. And when you pull one of these out, it's, it's over with. They're quick, they're fast, okay? Have I taught people how to use it? Yes. Within the progressive system of Dancer Savat, you start learning the Sakatripa's techniques in red glove. But I teach it. But again, you have to know the patterns before you can start moving forward. Enough so that we had that out of this one, we made a fake blade. Well, not a fake, a trainer. And this was made by a dear friend of mine, Master Jeffy Finder. You hold it the same way. You can even put a insert a little leather strap for you to hold, move. Understand? It's safe. There's no cutting. You can move it in. You can play with it. Over. It's very, very nice to have a trainer nowadays. But I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna talk about the Sacatripa history. The original blades did not have a lock, even though locks are now produced. Some of the ones that I've seen now have locks. 
they have a lock that's basically a pin back, pull back lock that it, that it goes over, clips on, that's the end of the story. Those locks, if you see those in the Sacatripas, those were introduced in the 50s forward. Okay? So the Sacatripas without blades, without a lock, with a leather strap, with a ring, you can say they're pre-1950B, okay? The ones with a lock are 1950 to the present. Now, somewhere in the 70s, you had to start labeling where a product was made. Okay, in the trades made in the USA, made in Mexico, made in China, so on and so forth. So about 75, the ones you start seeing, they will etch something on the blade, and they'll always say, Echo in Mexico, made in Mexico. If you have the Echo in Mexico on the blade, they're probably from 75 this way. How rare are Zacatipas? They're pretty rare. They're even pretty rare in Mexico. The last one that I saw, the last time that I was in Mexico, I was in, uh, in Chihuahua with uh, a dear friend of mine. We were teaching over there, Savat, uh, with Elena Garay, and I ended up seeing a Zacatipa. They wanted $50 for it, okay? It was an old Zacatripa, and I told the person, now come back and get it. And what happened, we continued moving. I just forgot, and never went back and got it. What a, what's a good price to pay for a Zacatripa? In, I've seen some on eBay. Listen, you should not pay more than $50 on it, period, okay? But there's a, I've seen some go for 200 I've seen some go for 15. I've seen some go from all over the place. If you want to get one, sometimes you see them in eBay under Sacatripa, Mexican Sacatripa knife or Mexican fighting knife. But again, this blade is held upward. The safety, the lock is literally this strand and it's, pl it's played on a center line basis to see what gets in, in on, on the inside out. It's not out. It's not coming from the outside, because you can't. You see the angulation? If I come from here down, you're gonna, it's gonna be very hard for me to come backwards. So it's very inside. From the center line, boop. Up, oh, bye-bye, good luck. Okay, we're gonna do a little explanation. As I told you, well, I've been telling you all, the difference between Sacatripa and Sacatripas. Sacatripa, as I have said, is literally the knife, Sacatripa. Sacatripas is what we use in dance rooms a lot, okay? It's a big difference. Put this back. A lot of folks want to kind of place both things together like they're one. No, Sacatripas is the set of techniques on how we use a knife in our pedagogy. Because of the love for the blade and the respect that I have for that blade, I said I teach Sacatripas. Okay? And, uh, and I started showing it. And I told everybody what it was for, what, what, how. And through the years, the internet, folks out there, people have assumed have gotten things together, have brought things, other assumptions, have made up a bunch of nonsense, and they say Mexican knife fighting is called Zacatripas. No. A Zacatripas is a type of style of knife that is regional to South Texas and Northern Mexico. Okay? But the sets of dance from Sabat and why they were there, you see how I carry my blade on, on my right, right? So I, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, kind of put, push that in because I don't want to bring out the wrong one. And I want to place this one here, okay? The sets were created on teaching mechan mechanics. One, the draw and slice. Second, how to slice, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why how to slice. I'm gonna have this out, right? I'm just gonna use this, uh, I'm gonna use uh, Danny here. He throws a punch. A lot of people go from here and say, I'm gonna cut across. It looks fine. I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna do whatever, whatever, whatever I'm gonna do with it. Only because I place my knife 
across his lower, lower tricep and bicep, the branchial area. Okay? Does not mean that I'm going to cut him. If he's wearing a leather jacket and I go fast, nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to cut meat. Okay? A lot of folks forget that I'm an executive chef. I'm also a butcher. Believe me, I'm a hunter. I field dress hundreds upon thousands of game. Okay? And you have to have understanding of how to cut and what it's there. Okay? I'm going to use his arm. If I just go across with speed, maybe I cut, maybe I don't. It's a 50-50% chance. Now, if I cut, how deep is the laceration? Depends on the speed. Depends on how much time the blade literally stayed on the arm. Okay? Alright? So, for you to actually cut, you have to actually come in at a 45 degree angle on a, on a 90 for it to get me and hit the bone and slide into it. Kind of deep bony. Understand what I'm saying? For you to get a laceration. So when we were thinking, so when we were doing the sets and the techniques, we're trying to place together how we're going to teach them, okay, on the draw. Very important, everybody carries a knife out here, website story kind of thing, switching them over back and forth and uh, doing whatever they want, doing the patty cake, it's all fine. You want to train that way, please do so. You're not offending me one bit. But here's the blade. The blade's inside, blade I'm putting in my pocket. Why? Because I'm going to practice the draw. He has a blade, okay? And, he's gonna, and we're going to go with a basic thrust for us to understand. As he thrusts, I parry, and this goes to 45 over to the kidney. That is the first one, thank you. That is the first one of the sets of Dancer Usabai. And you're going to see that in White Bluff. Okay? All right? And I'm going to tell you why we're doing it this way. He comes in. One. Okay? Now we're going to go ahead and do number three. Pocket. Okay? As he comes in. Comes over. In. Out. Okay? These were techniques, sets that were set in into the curriculum in 1995, 1996. They were accepted, voted on. Okay? Why do we do this? In other words, as it comes in number three, yes, I'm cutting over, going underneath, bringing it up to the neck. Controlling, manipulating, there's a lot of little things going on there. Some people might say, oh, you're going to lose traction of the blade. Remember, this is a pedagogy teaching. Teaching one thing, he comes back, out of the way. Okay? See how I'm, I'm actually leaning as it comes in? Whoop, see, I'm literally out of the line of attack. That's what it's teaching you, number one. Second, how to place a knife, how to literally make sure that I'm getting, I'm biting bone and going across. That's the main important parts of the Sacatripas. But how do they turn into the real Sacatripas? Do they have any? Of course they do. Here's a Sacatripa. Here's a training blade of a Sacatripa. Even though this is 100 years old, more or less, still has, a, still has an edge, still cut. But I'm going to tell you what it's for and how it's done differently. You have to understand that when I'm holding it, the blade is in the center and the blade's going to go up. So it's very hard for me to cut this way, very hard for me to cut this way. It has to be done in angular, in a circular motion, okay? Understand? So I'm going to use a training blade. He can have a knife if he wants to. It doesn't matter. Punch, knife, doesn't matter. So as he comes in, this one can't really turn. See? Now I'm going to turn him around for you guys to understand what I'm doing. Okay? As he comes around. See? I just cut, cut, out. Understand? Let me do that again. As it comes in, see, it's going straight in, 
turns, he catches the arm as I'm peering out. I am basically deep bone, stepping in and gutting out. That's the way we used to train, the way I was trained. The second part is right number three, how it goes in, the number three, as he comes in, I go boom. So I think, see? Outside. Very, very simple. Again, he comes in. See how it's cutting? Switch, back of the neck, down. They're very light, very quick. But this is a sacatripas. The way we use it in that through sabat. This is a sacatripa, the knife. So we'll continue with it. But again, remember, we should do a workshop. I'll keep you guys posted. Maybe I'll do a Zoom class. Who knows? But that was a great question on the history of, of the Sacatripa. Remember? Sacatripas is what we teach in Dance Rusalat. Sacatripa is a knife. It's a goat herder's knife. When I've talked to the old folks that are around, they said that there was a lot of gauchupinos that, that were, came in from Spain that worked at some of the ranches that stayed and have ranches here, especially in South Texas, Northern Mexico. So this is a blade that is Mexican in nature. In its northern Mexico, southern uh, Texas, and border, and it was used a lot in fights. There's other blades as well, but uh, later on, I'll compile them all together and show everybody the different ones. As we're touching base, one of the questions that, how aggressive is Sacatipas? Believe me, it's very aggressive, and it's to the point. It's not something that's being flailed, flailed out. You can't go down because the blade's pointing up, right? So you can go up, yeah. Can I switch it? Maybe. Can I switch it this way? Maybe. If you hold it like this, you're stupid. And it's not going to because it's going to fold into you. You have nowhere to lock it if you're using the straps. If it's locked, you can do so. But guess what's going to happen to it? It's going to be very, these are very flimsy. As soon as it comes in, it's going to break. It's going to go one way. You're going to be left with a handle. Want to do it? Please continue. We're not insulting anybody. We want you guys to train, and I want you to train to the best of your perfection. What I'm just showing this is a historical content for that. Okay? Because this is the way I was passed on. He grabs a blade. He can have a blade. Let's go with, he comes in with, he attacks with the right, with the left. I just want to show you guys what happens. He goes, from, see? There, see? In the, in the blade underneath. Very simple, let me, let me switch him around. He comes in, see? Where the other one is, see? When he comes in to, to strike, see, checkmate. Very simple, okay? He comes in, okay? Comes in, see? Watch the other side. As soon as he turns to step, whoop, good night. All right? Damn. You guys be safe. Stay safe. And train well. Okay? We will do some classes. And this is just energizing me a little bit more to go out there and teach a little bit out there. For those who wish, give us a ring on my email. We turn academy2012 at gmail.com. You want to take some classes, you want to start learning, join. The members join the crew at uh, Buy Me A Coffee. We throw an academy at buymeacoffee.com. Be safe.